Good morning. Hey, rear facing cam is up. We are here at Summit. Summit in Salmo just fueled up. Blazing to get over the Bombi and uh, get loaded at Interfor. Grand Forks. I shot this yesterday. Today's actually Thursday. All right. So yeah, it's Thursday. I know it ruins the magic, but I didn't want to shoot another video of leaving Spokane again because Friday morning I will be in Spokane one more time before getting a load out of Colville back home. So I figure if I have enough time here on Thursday to quickly get another video in. Just came over here to Salmo to fuel up, top off on fuel. That way I'm good to go home tomorrow. And just hammer down. So, get over to Castlegar, get loaded. I should be there in about 40, 47, 45 minutes, maybe 50 minutes, I don't know. We're not allowed to get out of the truck while they're loading us in at Enter 4. We've got to sit in the truck. So, but I'll keep my rear facing cam going if we get loaded right away. And uh, get a shot of that at the end of the truck getting loaded. If that works out, don't really know until we get there. Hammer down. The scale's probably open. They've been doing inspections there, so hopefully they don't do an inspection on us because there goes an hour in that case. And that would suck. I mean, every single day so far, something's gone weird. Where I thought I had lots of spare time and it ended up not being spare time. That's okay. We've been making it work. So yeah, we're southbound on Highway 6 from uh, Summit, headed into Salmo, and then we'll head up and over the Bombay, through Castlegar, not really through Castlegar, kind of go around Castlegar by the airport, and then down the Columbia to Interfor Lumber. Load nine lifts of two by six, 16 feet long. Have to go tarp it. In this wind, it's gotten really windy. That's not gonna be fun at all. Not even a tiny little bit. Not looking forward to untarping it tonight. What's that, three and a half, four hours down the road? After loading. Untarp it down there again in the wind. Because that sucks too.
Welcome to Salmo. I was almost, almost at it wrong. Welcome to Salmo. Yet another overcast day. It's snowing pretty good. up through, well, as we got further north, Medellin, Medellin Falls and stuff, it was snowing pretty good. I was like hoping the wind died down, but those flags are still flapping pretty good. Not as much as they were. Maybe I'll get lucky and it'll be easier. Maybe it'll die down on for us. Maybe, please. I can't get away with not tarping the load because up and over uh, Rosslyn Hill there it's still very wet and I would get moisture all over the, the loads so they don't want any any uh, road grime hitting these loads fair enough fair enough So for everybody that's hit that join button and you're waiting for your stickers, I'll uh, give you an update on Monday. See if we got those done and ordered. And apparently there's a bit of a lineup. Oh, everybody else is turning off. Okay. Appreciate people putting their signal lights on early. So the plan for tomorrow is I will deliver this load in Spokane first thing in the morning. We're going to load in Colville and head home and then deliver that on Tuesday morning near Kamloops. Tomorrow there will be that bonus video for everybody that hits that join button. Uh, Sunday there will be a some kind of video. I'll sleep with a trucker. I think probably the one driving north of north of uh, Spokane through Kusik and Ione and. Medellin Falls, Medellin Falls. I believe that one's there on Sunday. And then Monday will be northbound, somewhere between Penticton and Kamloops. Want a hard climb? 
sliming the connector maybe. Eh, we'll see. We'll see if this logging truck stays on this road or stays on Highway 3. So if you, if you don't turn off of Highway 3, you end up on 3B. We're going to make the exit in about 6 kilometers, maybe a little less, to the right, staying on Highway 3. Just a message popped on the screen on my phone that says tarping station under construction. Don't have to tarp load today. What? Um, yes. Thank you. With the wind. Thank you. Prayers answered. Hallelujah. I'll have to read more of it when I stop, but do not have to tarp. The roads are pretty dry anyway, so... Okay! Okay, that, that's... Yeah, that's much better. Or exit. I like that red and black paint job. That's just pretty cool, pretty sharp. I wonder if you could take that same pattern and go black and yellow or something like that. Logging truck is going straight. Both vehicles are going straight. I'm the only one turning. I guess I should say this, I keep getting these questions. What kind of engine do I have and is it a standard? 
manual transmission. Got a Cummins 500 horse underneath the hood. And it is a auto shift. Not to be confused with an automatic. It is neither a manual transmission or an automatic transmission. Well, it is. It is a manual transmission. Except I'm not the one doing the shifting. So, above the transmission where the, the, the gear stick would normally be, there's two worm screws. One that runs left to right and one that runs front to back. Those two worm screws are attached to the shifter. And the computer moves those worm screws left to right and up and down as if a person was doing the shifting. So the computer is doing the shifting in the manual transmission. It's not a traditional like a car automatic. This truck still has the 18 gears. It is just the computer controlling two worm screws doing the shifting. Does that make sense? assuming at least wet roads but probably snow it's zero degrees Celsius here right now Catching up with a cube van, probably an 18 wheeler. So that car passed over here. That's double solid here. And there is oncoming vehicles too. Car passed over here. What do you call it, Linda? Uh, a temporary Canadian? There goes another temporary Canadian passing on a double solid with oncoming truck. Just a matter of time before it bites them. This is a very slow 18-wheeler. Most 18-wheelers are a little quicker than that. Even loaded max. Oh no, it's not an 18-wheeler. 
22 wheeler. It's got three axles on the back. So he can be fairly heavy. Look at all that dust behind us. So that, that four-wheeler, the temporary Canadian, could have waited one corner, one corner, to safely pass that truck. You couldn't just wait one corner. Mm, I'm starting to smell that uh, burger I've got going in the toaster oven. snow up here, not bad. Do a quick brake check. Hammer down. I just went around the whole truck at Summit, so I know there's no flat tires. Unless it happened from there to here, but I'll uh, set all my slack adjusters and all that. I have to remind myself to set the slack adjusters because sometimes you forget and I'm like, you know, I haven't pressed the brake all the way in for a while now. And the slack adjuster basically adjusts how far the brakes are from the brake drum or from the brake discs. And if you compress the brake all the way in, and hold it there a couple times, it will adjust that automatically so that your brakes are closer to, your brake shoes are closer to, apparently I used too much air. It's all right, that'll build up in a few seconds. make those adjustments or just do that every now and then it automatically adjusts the brakes and that way if you're coming down a hill and you start getting hot brakes the brakes the brake shoes are closer to the disc brakes and your brakes will last longer before they will no longer be effective so your brakes can get hotter before they become useless so an emergency hard braking it could be the difference of being a runaway or not. That's why on your pre-trip and brake checks, I usually do that. Press the brake all the way in, hold it, let the slack adjusters adjust, and uh, make your life just one little one more small tiny little step safer and if you take hundreds of these little steps every day you can get down the mountain safely uh, one of you old timers in the comments said that uh, used to come down Kootenai Pass at 20 kilometers an hour I guess back in the day the engine brakes wouldn't have been as powerful as they are now we got a lot stronger engine brakes so we can come down quicker with, with fully loaded. Still not full speed, depending on what you have on the back. A fully loaded Super B, you still want to go down fairly slow, but I'd say probably 40 kilometers an hour instead of 20, at least with the big Cummins engine brakes we have on these things. Um, with a single trailer, I'll often do 60, if I'm max load on a single, max Canadian load on a single trailer, 
I'll often do 60 kilometers an hour. If it's a lighter load, I'll go 70, 75. But you gotta know where your limits are. Not, not only, you have to know where your limits are and then drive a couple of kilometers less than those limits just in case you come on around a corner and there's a broken down car. So if your limit is, you know for a fact you can come down that mountain at 80 kilometers per hour. I learned this the hard way coming down Anarchist at my rookie year. I'm like, I can do this with a Super B 80 kilometers an hour, no problem. Did it a bunch of times. And then all of a sudden, there was a Super B crawling down the mountain at like 10 kilometers an hour and I had to hit the brakes hard and then I realized going down the mountain with a Super B at 80 kilometers an hour makes all your brakes smoke by the time you come to a stop coming down the mountain at 60 kilometers an hour I guess with a Super B more like 40 kilometers an hour if there's somebody stopped ahead of you, you can stop without smoking your brakes. So I learned that one, I'd say the easy way because that's the first time and only time I smoked my brakes and nothing went wrong. The hard way would have been losing the brakes. So I, I think I got away lucky and learned it that lesson the easy way. The medium way, the easy way would have just been to come down the mountain slower. Um, I can't remember his name, the old timer that left the message there, he goes, rule is go down the hill the speed you went up the hill. And I think that's true, Until, if, unless you know that hill inside and out, you know your truck inside and out, then you can start making adjustments. But if you went up that mountain in sixth gear, go down that mountain in sixth gear. like to say you can make it down the mountain unlimited amount of times indefinitely too slow you can come down the mountain too slow a hundred percent of the time but you can only come down the mountain too fast once and I pushed that line one time I pushed that line close to that too fast and when I did smoke the brakes I pulled out at the first pull out pull over stop make sure there's nothing on fire hauling a load of lumber you want to make sure nothing's on fire and then let the brakes all cool down nicely before driving again Did it once, and once was once was too often already. There's not a lot of snow here. Man, we need more snow. Maybe we'll get lucky with a lot of rain in spring, but winter is not promising. couple of really good good solid snowstorms you know one's big enough to shut the highways off get like three feet of snow shut everything down just pile it on
right, coming up to the scale here, down into Castlegar. Following the Columbia River now. Awesome if the scale is closed. I've already got good news about not tarping. It'd be even cooler if, if we didn't have the scale either. Leave that says open. Oh well. Be happy with the good things that I am getting, right? They do have their equipment out again, so they are doing inspections again. I am empty, so I do not have to go over the actual scale. It's interesting they got a ghost pickup sitting there. Eh, it might not be them. That might be a customer. Yeah, that's a customer. Overland is going over very slowly over the scale. We'll stay behind him here just in case he gets pulled in. Looks like he's all clear. No inspections now, but we'll get loaded and then there's still one more chance of getting inspected then after we're loaded. CVSE every now and then sits up here 
waiting for trucks to bypass the scale. If you drive under a sign that says open for the scale, it doesn't matter if the scale is on a huge detour to get there, you must take that detour to that scale and scale. Wasn't sure what that car was going to do, let me in or not. Here's a scale sign right here on the left hand side. If you exit out or on this exit, you do not. You do not have to go to the scale if you were going to exit here. But once you drove past that open sign, you mu even if you're headed west and the scale is east, you must head east to scale, do a U-turn, and then go on your way. It doesn't matter if you're empty or loaded, you must go through the scale. If even I, I bypassed the scale and didn't weigh myself. Some scales make you weigh yourself loaded or empty, especially at border crossings. What they're looking for is illegal transportation of materials. The truck looks empty, but is there product hidden on that trailer? Is that trailer heavier than it should be? Like in the floorboards, is there stuff hidden in there? Is there, is there a fake, fake floor on that trailer? So at, at customs, you'll very often see scales. They force you to go over the scales, even if you're empty. And it, the scales aren't. Most of them are not at customs. Usually, they're a few miles up or down the road. Just thinking what where else where else I know I I know a little bit of the drug trade when you literally have over hundreds first cousins and hundreds and hundreds of second cousins that you know there's bound to be a few bad apples in there. I had a cousin whose job it was just to weld, to weld, take a rim and uh, weld a compartment. Basically you just take flat iron, bend it around the rim and weld it on. And uh, that rim now has a compartment in it that you can put stuff in. And then you just have to swap tires. And then my uncle would drive across the border every single day. This is the Mexico-US border. Don't know why, possibly he would drive over the border every day for his window company to buy windows every day. But 
bought, he bought windows every day, across the border every day. And sure enough, a ton truck got new tires put on, or had a tire change in the US and in Mexico every single day. And I don't know why, don't know why. Told that story. many years ago on Facebook and that cut or that uncle made a long drive and just came to visit us days after I told that story the story had some more details in it but days after that story uncle just came by and visited and everything was really nice and made sure I was doing okay. I'm like, yep, I understand the message that got sent there. <laughs> Basically, I might be in Mexico, but I can be here within days to say hi. Lawrence, one of our managers, sitting there in the pickup waiting for us to do spot checks, safety checks. Mostly does the uh, chip division, but I chat with him every now and then. He's the one that was my teacher at uh, MTI when I was going to MTI. So my instructor at MTI now works for Sutco. One of those guys that... We have a blue bridge below us here now. It's the first section that's across the bridge. A little bit deep. One of those guys that... Thank you. ...used to be a trucker. And... ...understands what it's like to be on the road. So he never hassles you about the little things that... ...you may or may not be doing or whatever. He just, he understands real real world trucking versus on paper office trucking. So it's nice having somebody as a manager in charge that knows what it's like to be on the road. So that's been a huge improvement. Note to all trucking companies, make the managers that interact with truckers hire managers that used to be truckers. doing there bud don't make a swerve towards me Selgar beside us here, they make pulp. They take wood chips and turn them into pulp. Basically paper. Mushy, mushy white stuff. 
and that gets transported across oceans on barges and stuff for container ships. One of these days, I don't know if you guys can see, oh, my burger's ready. Down on the right hand side, I don't know if you guys can see, there's a chip truck backed onto a tipper there. One of these days I'm gonna have to shoot video of how they how they empty those trailers. Because it's pretty, pretty cool. Good timing for the burger. Okay, put my Bluetooth on. <clears throat> Call the chipper. <clears throat> I'll wait till I'm down the hill in the yard. <clears throat> Excuse me. All lumber trucks loading. Take the corner wide just in case another truck's coming out. Looks like a bunch of conveyor parts and they've been sitting here for a couple of years now. I'm not sure what they're for. They look like they're brand new, but maybe they ordered them and then cha plans changed. I don't know. See, she's in the office. Oh, maybe. I don't recognize that vehicle, so. It's a different vehicle than normally sits there. Ugh, 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 ugh. to a full complete stop if you don't expect an email from your boss going hey you didn't stop at, at the stop signs on site make sure you go do that actually I've never got that email just as part of the safety team I know that happened Very rough railroad crossing, so you want to take your time. How's it going today? I'm always good. Apparently, I'm the second Sutco truck today. 
I heard that the tarping station's under construction. The roads are pretty dry too. Are you so excited? I am excited, especially for how windy it is. I'm like, I'm not looking forward to untarping in that wind. So, yeah, yeah. Sounds good, thank you. Bye. Shh, I just realized I drove past that stop sign. Shh, 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 don't tell anyone. gonna throw in a couple of clips of the forklift loading us as long as the camera lasts that long I'll see you guys down the road tomorrow in the bonus video tomorrow on or Sunday on the sleep with a trekker channel and then Monday back on the road so thank you guys all for your support really really appreciate it you guys absolutely Rock. Thank <laughs> you.